Hi everyone, this is Frida and welcome back to the Dental Radiology. Today's topic is about principle of oral radiographic interpretation. Our emphasis is on the crafter radiograph and panoramic radiographs that are dental routine radiographs, but this can be extended in other x-ray radiographs like CBCT and CT scan. At first, let's describe the difference between the interpretation and diagnosis. Interpretation means explanation of what I see in a radiograph. Is it normal anatomy? Is it supernumerated? Do I see a lesion? Do I see bone loss? Do I see widening PDL? Anything that I see in a radiograph, we have to read it. The ability of reading the radiograph step by step, this is called interpretation. But Diagnosis means the identification of a disease by examining or analyzing it. So, so what I'm saying is that interpretation is one of the stages that will help me to go towards the diagnosis. So today we're talking about the interpretation before the diagnosis. So we can never put on our diagnosis only on a single radiograph. An example, I always tell my students that if you see a lesion in the apex of the carious tooth, I will report a single radiolucent lesion in the practical of the tooth. The vital test is recommended. What do I mean by this? It means that I always need another information for putting down the diagnosis. So I need other steps with the interpretation so I can go towards the diagnosis. So we have four stages before getting to the diagnosis. Step one, I need a history, history of my patient. It will be the past note of the history, history like uh, the pain, the duration of the pain, any swelling, anything that the patients tell me that would help me with my diagnosis. Step two, I need to have a clinical examination. What should I check? Like I have to see uh, all Exam all the oral cavity. I have to check for any caries, any swelling, color changes, palpation. I have to do the vitality test, and etc. Now that I have all these information, I'm allowed to take a radiograph, or I have to examine other radiographs that the patient has. And if it's necessary, I'll take another radiograph, or I'll use the complementary radiographs like. I'll take a CBCT scans or I'll take CT scans or anything that the patient needs. Now I have to interpret the radiograph and put down the differential diagnosis and then decide the laboratory test and the biopsy and anything that I have on that information. I can now reach towards the diagnosis. So the interpretation is one of the steps that I have to know for the radiograph before the diagnosis. What is essential for interpretation of a radiograph? The optimum viewing condition. The condition that we need for viewing a radiograph is very important. Like a radiograph with a bad quality, like seeing a radiograph only when we have it taken with a cell phone, or like seeing a radiograph of a panel that is cropped, that would not give us enough information. Because like in a panorama, I have to see the both sides and compare with each other. So never crop a radiograph and send it to the radiologist only just for the single part that you have a question. Always send it like with the whole image. So we need a radiography with good quality, good contrast, and minimal distortion. Number two is having the knowledge about what a radiography should look like. Like I have to know about what a craft radiography would look like, uh, what a bite wing would look like, what a CBC scans would look like, and which one of these radiographs will give me the enough information of uh, what I need. Step three, the knowledge of normal anatomy as well as normal variation. It's very important to have the knowledge about landmarks and normal variations. To differentiate the macular sinus from a multivocular lesion 
or I have to differentiate a mental foramina from a craft collection, it's very important to know the normal anatomy. Number four is knowing the knowledge about the radiographic appearance of a pathological condition. Like I have to know what an OKC will look like, what a case will look like, what a malignancy tumor or what a benign tumor will look like. So it will give me enough knowledge about what I'm looking for. Like malignancies would have a very destructive appearance and will destroy the bone. So it's very important to know what a pathological condition will have in a radiography. Number five is having the knowledge about the radiography technology and geometry. Like I have to know in a panel photograph, I would have an aghast image, like the ghost of the cervical vertebra would be superimposed on the mandibular incisors and that can influence my interpretation. Or I have to know in a practical radiograph, because of the angulation of the tear tube, the position of the zygomatic process can be superimposed on the apex of the teeth and interference with my interpretation. Okay, what is important in each radiograph? We always should examine the whole radiograph, not just the teeth, but anything we see in the radiograph. In the intra or radiograph, we should look up for anything in that radiograph, like in a practical radiography. After you look at the teeth, the periodontium, the bone structures, the adjacent structures, anything that I see in that field of view. Like after you look for a bone loss, pedial widening, any tooth resorption or the bone resorption that I can see in the radiograph. So on the intro or radiograph of a full month's uh, patient that I have a lot of prep radiography and four bite wings of the patient, I have to have a sequence or a path so I won't miss any part. So we can start from the upper right side of the patient towards the upper lip and then I'll come down to the mandibular part and start from the left towards the right and then I'll look at the bite wings so this sequence will help me not to miss any part. What is important in an extra or a radiography? The most common extra or radiography is the panoramic radiograph. If I don't want to miss a part in a panoramic radiograph, I have it divided into six zones. So a panoramic radiograph is like looking at a book when I'm opening it and looking towards the spine and the both covers. So it's the skull that I have opened it and look at it from the both sides. So the panoramic radiograph would be divided into six zones and I will look at each zone step by step so I won't miss any part. So I'll divide this radiograph into six zones. Zone number one is showing the teeth. So I'll look at the teeth one by one. I'll start from the upper right towards the upper left and then the lower left towards the lower right. Zoom number two is showing the sinus and the orbit. It is very important to look at the sinus and have a clear sinus in the primary radiograph because lesions that uh, occur in the sinus can start getting very big and when they're diagnosed, they're in a very severe stage. Zoom number three is showing the inferior border of the mandible. Zoom number four, the temporal mandible joint. Number five is showing the cervical vertebra and the ramus. And zoo number six is showing some parts of the cervical vertebra and the hyoid bone. So I'll divide it into six zones. I'll look at each, all the parts step by step. So what I have understood is that it's very important to look at the radiography step by step and see the whole radiograph. And then I will look at the lesion. It's very important to look at the whole radiograph. Some of the patients just come with a radiograph for a routine uh, dental checkup and there are a lot of diseases that can be diagnosed and we would be the first doctor for uh, diagnosing this disease in a patient and we'll have the patient to have a early diagnosis. Okay, that was for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and press the bell button for getting notifications for the next video. Have a good day.